Hi, everyone, and welcome to a special edition of Newsmakers TV. We're talking about last night's big Democratic debate, and I am joined by a truly all-star panel uh, of uh, journalists and uh, operatives who uh, have worked in politics, national politics, presidential campaigns for many years. Uh, Carlo Marinucci, uh, former California uh, editor, uh, political editor for Politico and the San Francisco Chronicle, uh, Bill Carrick, longtime uh, Democratic media strategist and uh, campaign manager, uh, has uh, been involved in many uh, presidential campaigns, starting with Ted Kennedy, uh, Dick uh, uh, Gebhardt and others. And Dan Moraine, a, a former uh, editorial page editor of the Sacramento Bee, who is the biographer of uh, Vice President uh, Kamala Harris, who we'll get into in a little bit. But uh, let me just start with a quick assessment from everyone. Uh, Carla, you watched the debate with some friends last night. Uh, what was uh, what was your takeaway? Uh, I was trying to come up with a movie analogy, uh, Jerry. I mean, this was Titanic, uh, Apocalypse Now, I don't know, the St. Valentine's Day Massacre, what do you want to call it? I mean, Joe Biden had one job, uh, to, and that's to reassure the voters that he was up to the job, and, and he failed at it. And... Um, I mean, I, I think some of this was the format in that um, there were no uh, counters to Trump's many lies, 30 lies altogether. Uh, but I think it was Biden team fail. Uh, I mean, you had that split screen. Trump looked 15 years younger with the fake tan and the hairpiece. And I'm sorry, Biden was looked like a cadaver. I mean, what did they did his team not? work with him to see what this was going to look like on screen. I think for all those reasons, the worst thing was that uh, after six days of prep at Camp David, he just looked unprepared uh, to make the case against Trump on some right. major issues. So for all those reasons, that the Democrats this morning uh, have, a, have a massive Tylenol headache and I don't I don't know how this, how this goes away. Yeah, Bill, you've worked for many years, you know, with with uh, media and television. I mean, how could they let him go out there like that? What was your thought? Well, I mean, I, I think he had a bad night. That's for sure. I'm sure. <laughs> but, uh, I think part of this is uh, everything is so much more intense around this campaign. So people forget you know, Nixon blew the first debate with Kennedy. Uh, you, you go through the whole list. Uh, Reagan lost his first debate to Carter. Uh, Obama lost his first debate to Romney. I mean, we've got a lot of sort of wreckage in the debate world. Uh, uh, Gore, George W. Bush, all of them had bad debates. So uh, I'm I'm not as hysterical as everybody else with a not, and I part of that is because most of the people who are going to vote for Biden really really are scared of Trump. So uh, it, it, it's it, there's a lot more emotion to it, but I, I think it was one debate and well let's go let's get, let's move on. All right, Dan, uh, uh, Kamala, what did you think of the debate? And then they called on. Uh, Vice President Harris to kind of bail uh, by not a little bit on CNN, and uh, she kind of got high marks for that. What was your takeaway of the night? I, I uh, thought she did fine. I thought she was good. I mean, I, I thought she would. She came off as being very sincere, and and uh, I, I thought it was fine. I mean, let's don't let, let's don't lose Trump in this little little uh, nervous breakdown everybody's having. I mean. The guy told more lies in one debate than anybody's any other presidential candidates said said in the whole campaign. All right, let's go to Dan. What do you? What was your takeaway? My takeaway is that the Democrats, if uh, if they're going to salvage anything, better better focus on the Senate and the House. Um, this is uh, it was disastrous, just disastrous. He looked awful. He was befuddled. It was horrible. Yeah. That's my well, take. You, you, you've probably spent more time with anyone with with Vice President Harris. Uh, a lot of talk today. Well, maybe we should have her, and or she looked good. Mm -hmm. What, uh, what, what were your thoughts on that? Well, I should say I haven't spent much time with not, her. Not recently, she, but she, she, didn't, she didn't help me with my book, and uh, <laughs> and I haven't talked to her since 2019. Um, uh, but 
uh, you know, I mean, it's always been my view that she is that she's underestimated that, you know, people, you know, the the certainly uh, Democratic insiders are 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 dismiss her at uh, incorrectly. Republicans uh, minimize her incorrectly. I mean, you know, this is a woman who won three times statewide in California. You don't do that if you're if you're a schmo. She's got her failings, her problems. Um, you know, Carla and I both wrote about them a lot. Um, uh, but, um, you know, I mean, <clears throat> is she, is, could she beat Trump? I, no, I'm not sure. I'm not sure this year. Um, but, uh, but, you know, she's not somebody to be trifled with. She's, right. she's, she is a serious, smart, competent person. Yeah, Carla, uh, Bill mentioned the word hysteria, which I think is an accurate uh, description, at least what I'm hearing from uh, Democrats this morning. But, you know, I, I just look at the, uh, the, New, the New York Times opinion page this morning, uh, the, where, Brutal. but you know, which is probably Biden's biggest rooting section. Joe Biden is a good man and a good president. He must bow out of the race. Biden cannot go on like this. I'm hearing high anxiety among Democrats. Some are calling it a disaster. President Biden, I've seen enough. He must withdraw. Is there, I mean, is there any reality to any of that, or is that just sort of a West Wing fan fiction? You know, I, I think Bill can tell us more than anybody, but I, I have to say all this talk about Biden dropping out, um, and, and last night you heard so much uh, talk from some of the anchors about Gavin Newsom uh, and Kamala Harris. Uh, Gretchen Whitmer, uh, Wes Moore, you're hearing these names being thrown out. Let's remember, unless Biden himself decides to get out of this. this He's is the nominee. Yeah, he, he, that's right. It's not going anywhere. But, uh, and people have pointed this out before, uh, should he ever, should he decide to do that, which is hardly unlikely, um, the party could not pass over Kamala Harris, the first woman and the first African-American to hold that job. That There's a party that's dependent on those votes. And you talk to people like Gary South uh, and other Democrats who have long talked about wh why a, a, a California governor running for president is a, is a challenge and a heavy lift under any circumstances these days. But it, it, it is all fantasy right now. Uh, and 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 Bill can tell us more than anybody about that. It, there, I, I thought Gavin Newsom did a spectacular job as a as a, a a surrogate last night, and in fact, you know, I'm sure some of the viewers out there were saying, "Well, why isn't he running?" Well, he's governor of California, and that is a problem in itself uh, for somebody who wants to be president. But yeah. anyway, Bill, you agree that this is just a fantasy about uh, replacing Biden? Absolutely, and I, I don't, I, you know, it's. Um... The, the news media, whether it's the opinion people or the working press, they're all carried away with this because it's, it's the story of the day. It's, it's not going anywhere. It's not, it's not going to go one damn bit towards getting rid of Biden. None of it. And I, I, I think, obviously, they have a big structured campaign, enormous fundraising uh, operation, uh, they're running. He's in North Carolina doing a big rally today. Uh, th that's just, it's not going to happen. It's, it's a, it's a fantasy. And, uh, you know, and we went, we saw this on the Republican side for a long time. And, you know, we're, they're going to get rid of uh, Trump. How'd that turn out? It's, it's just not going to happen. Yeah. Um, and I, I think the other piece of this is this will all calm down and we'll be on to something else. Uh, and it's uh, and he's and as I said, Joe Biden's not the first person to have a bad debate, and he won't be the first person to have had a bad debate and still got elected. Uh, Dan, you agree with that? Uh, well, I I don't think that the race is over, but I do think that you have one chance to make a first impression, and he's made he, he made a first impression with a lot of voters last night who are who are on the fence and i think what he looked like i mean he just he, he looked and sounded awful he sounded befuddled his 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 answers he just couldn't he couldn't follow him 
and and it was it you know it was uncomfortable to watch it. Um, it was painful to watch it, and I, I think that that uh, for a lot of voters, they would have turned off in the first ten minutes. They would have they would have just thought, why, why am I going to subject myself to this? Let's you know, is there is there a baseball game on? Something else I can do here, um, you know. Like I, I watched it because I had to. We we made <laughs> Thanks, you. Thanks, Jerry. Forced you to, we forced you to do that. Uh, Carla, uh, Bill made a good point. Uh, you know, that just sort of Trump's performance got completely overshadowed and lost yes. all this. Of course, he was a torrent of lies, as he often is, uh, and uh, sort of uh, rewriting history about January 6th, about abortion rights, uh, about all kinds of things. Didn't answer most of the questions, would not uh, state that he'll accept the uh, results of the election again. Uh, See, and I think, Jerry, I think that's, that is a problem um, with the format of the debate, although I think the, the moderators were both great, Dana Bash and, and Jake Tapper, they had a tough job, but uh, they, they had made the decision not to uh, fact check Trump. Uh, in, in, real in, time. in real time. The CNN did it later and determined that he he told 30 major lies. And they, of course, I, I just think that that letting him just uh, blather on uh, about those lies uh, was was I don't know I I I just don't don't think that was a good way to run that debate. But I, l let's say now we've got uh, some time before the election. I think you're going to have Trump um, making plenty of mistakes between now. I mean he's. He's uh, he's very confident. Obviously, they're running on, uh, you know, off this debate now. And I think he's he may we may go back to seeing the real Donald Trump, uh, which is um, somebody who insults, somebody who um, uses a lot of uh, just uh, fake news um, to tell his story. And that may we'll see how what happens in the in the uh, months to come, how much that could influence voters, as Dan said. That first impression is hard to get over, but um, and, and Biden is certainly behind the eight ball when you talk about a 38 percent approval rating among voters and being behind in all the major polls in all the swing states. This is going to be a heavy lift. There's no question about it. But I think you can't count out what Trump may do in the next couple of months that could still really influence public opinion. Bill, what's what's uh, what are they saying? What are they saying in 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 the meeting with? Biden's top, you know, with it with the uh, inner circle uh, today, they got to realize that this uh, was a was a stink bomb. But as you point out, you know, the nation's so divided. Trump's going to get forty five. Biden's going to get forty five on the natural. So it's really, you know, maybe six ten percent of people. Do you do you just you know kind of put this behind you and go on? You know, like a baseball team that loses fifteen to nothing. Oh, we got to play another game. Do you try to address it or fix it? Does he need to address the, his age issue? Uh, what would be the strategy you would advise? My, my strategy would be more aggressively get after Trump. You know, and, 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 and you can't expect that news media is going to do a good job of it. We saw that last night when they abdicated their responsibility to challenge a liar who's running for president, a pathological liar who's running for president, and they never challenged him. I mean, it's not going to be up to the news media to do this. It's got to be the Trump camp. It's got to be the Biden campaign, and Biden has to do it himself. Right, uh, Dan. Yeah, I'm going to say. I'm going to say real quick. I think the news media has a uh, has a lot of blame in 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 coming up to the in the way the campaign has been covered a lot. I mean, in the sense of. Uh, so many stories about the age issue and not a lot of stories or not as many stories about real issues that that matter to the voters. I mean, we didn't even hear gun, guns being brought up at all last night. That's a that's a big issue or something like AI, which is really going right. to determine the future of this country. None of that was discussed last night. And I think, um, you know, uh, on the, in the run up to this. Uh, Trump, you know, the news media has followed Trump's um, motorcade everywhere he goes. Once again, they're going back to the same mistakes they did uh, in, in past elections, which is give him a lot of free time um, and not and not really hold him to account on a lot of these lies. I think that that's a, a, a continued problem. 
Dan, I'm sorry I interrupted you. Uh, what were you going to say? Well, uh, nothing very profound, but um, you know, Biden Biden had one job, as Carla said, which is you know to look alive, to you know to be on his game, and Trump had one job, which was not to come off as crazy, and and um, Trump succeeded. Now he lied, obviously. He he. <laughs> repeated uh repeated lies and and there was a lot of bombast but you know he kept it he, you know for trump he kept it he 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 kept himself in check he he didn't rise to biden's bait when biden you know called him a wider wider and a sucker and a loser and you know questioned whether he oh my god carried his own golf bag like oh, why would they talk about golf Actually, okay. that was the most lively exchange between them. I know, I know, I know. Do you carry your own golf bag? They're, they're, they're golfing. Do you agree with uh, uh, Bill and uh, Carla that uh, our uh, former colleagues in the uh, news meeting have really dropped the ball on this, and particularly last night? I I don't know. I think uh, I think uh, I was surprised that there wasn't more fact checking last night. Um, that there was zero fact checking. I mean, that was kind of shocking to me. Uh, at, at the same time, we know who Trump is, and we know who Trump is because uh, because the national press has done a you know pretty good job of of detailing him in news articles and opinion pieces and in books. I mean, we know who he is. Um, now, the, the, at the at at the same time, uh, you know, voters seem to like his act and so you know at least at least 45 percent of them do um and 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 so it's you know it's going to come down you know i do think i do think the third party candidates benefited from 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 this i do think rfk jr uh benefited from from what happened last night um uh, you know he may inch up a point or two in some of these swing states which, which will matter yeah. Hey, Bill. No, but, but here, here we, we, we'll let, before we pass off this idea that well, he the media has really covered uh, uh, the fact that he doesn't tell the truth. Last night, he, you know, he he just said, he's saying that he produced the greatest economy in history. More people were unemployed when he left than there were uh, unemployed when he got there. Nobody's fact checking him in real life. Nobody. I mean, they write story, print stories and whatnot, but they don't even get to interview him. The guy only does interviews with the uh, far right wing media. It's, it's, it's Fox and company all day long. He doesn't do anything else. I mean, he, he's, he gets away with a lot of stuff that and he's done it for a long time and the media doesn't check him on it. Yeah. Carla, do you agree with Bill's uh, assessment that um, what uh, the Biden campaign needs to do is is have you know dark Brandon uh, just go after uh, 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 Trump uh, personally? And if so, do you think it ought to be on this democracy issue? Is that a salient issue for voters? Do you think it ought to be about the economy uh, or, or what? Well, I mean, in a, in a way, doesn't the democracy issue kind of bite back, Biden back? I mean, in the sense of if he, if he really thinks democracy is at stake at this point, uh, you know, is he the strongest candidate uh, uh, to protect uh, democracy? But I think, as Bill said, it, it doesn't matter. It's not going to happen. Uh, so he does need to get out there. And, and I've just tuned into his rally that he's got going this morning, and it looks like it's we're back to the say to the union, Joe Brandon, the dark Brandon. Uh, jo, high Joe, energy. Or high, yeah, high energy, you know, and that's, uh, maybe he can, he can come back from that and turn it around. And, uh, 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 but I think as, as Bill said, yeah, they, they've got no choice now, but to fight and to fight really strongly and to have those surrogates out there. And I think you're going to see Gavin Newsom all over the place because he is, I think, the number one um, uh, surrogate for Biden and super effective. Uh, at this point, they have to just be extremely aggressive against him and also hope he makes his own mistakes, Trump. Uh, and I and I 
I think that's likely to happen. I think we're going to see more gaffes, et cetera. I'm, what I'm interested, I'm interested to see if we'll see another debate. Uh, we, we may not see another debate. Yeah, there's and, one and, and that's, for September. that's one thing the Biden campaign has going for it, that this happened so early in the cycle. Yeah, the people, well, you know, Biden's already saying, they're already saying he's not dropping out and he's going to be at the second debate. Yeah. Bill, one thing I learned from you back it, in the day. Would Trump be at the second debate? If you're Trump, would, Bill, would you would you go to that second debate? Uh, yeah, I would. I, I don't think Trump, I don't, I, I, I think this is a very close election and Trump better be very careful. And, and if he gets into victory lap mode, he's going to get his ass whipped. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, Bill, you know, one thing I learned from you back in the day was, you know, when you're in the middle of a campaign and there's just, you know, wind swirling everywhere and you're getting walked, the hardest thing is just to kind of keep going with, uh, with what uh, your strategy is. What, what would you say is like the time window to, to really see what the impact of this is? Obviously it is the story of the day. Everybody's hysterical, but when there's polls, what? One week out, one month out, what, what, you know, how do you really get an accurate read on this? You know, there are no accurate reads. Let's start for, let's start with the premise here. <laughs> there are no accurate reads. Polling is a really uh, messy, incomplete uh, journey they're on now trying to figure out how to measure public opinion. And they're doing a really lousy job of it. So I, I, I don't know that we're going to get a good read from polling. Uh, it, it's going to be uh, very hard to do, and we can't get a, we can't get sample size. People don't answer the phone. They don't do debates. It's a, a, we're going to we're this is like the old days pre polling. We're going to be flying blind a lot. All right. Uh, well, what's, I'm just curious what's the psychological impact, Bill, of so many polls. You just had Nate Silver yesterday uh, say his calculations show. Trump has a 65% chance of winning. Uh, if Demo Democratic voters keep hearing that, I mean, do some of them just give up and say, forget it, I'm, st I'm staying home, I'm sitting this one out? Fortunately, I don't think anybody uh, pays much attention to Nate Silver and us. Uh, yeah, I just, I don't think that matters. Yeah. Hey, Dan. Um, I, I don't pay yeah. attention to him either, Bill. <laughs> uh, there, Dan, there's a lot of talk in the media world about, you know, don't stop, stop reporting about the odds of the election and start reporting on the stakes, i.e., you know, Trump's stated desire, you know, to really govern as, uh, you know, what would be an authoritarian strongman, certainly at odds with everything in the history of the country. Uh, what do you make of this uh, Project 2025 and and some of the statements that have been made? Uh, about, you know, increasing executive power and everything. Is that something that voters care about, would even register with? Or, uh, you know, how, how would Biden take advantage of it? Well, I, you know, voters ought to care about authoritarian tendencies of, of, of leaders. Um, you know, it, 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 it's un-American as far as I'm concerned. But uh, but at the same time, I think people uh, are upset about things like the border, uh, even, you know, in states where they're not particularly affected by uh, immigration or uh, undocumented immigration. Um, and, and people are upset about crime, even in places that are relatively safe. Um, so, you know, so, so we may be amenable to, we as a country may be amenable to to uh, a more authoritarian uh, person uh, leading the country. I mean, I, you know, it, it, it bothers me because I, I just want government to leave me alone. I don't want an authoritarian government. Um, and, and I would think that that, you know, Republicans, but Republicans have changed. I mean, this is not the Republican Party we grew up with. I mean, one of the things I'm doing working on this a new book of mine. It's spending a lot of time reading about Ronald Reagan, uh, reading his his early years, uh, 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 internal memos and that sort of thing. You know, he he could not have made it in this party. He could not have made it in this party. No, um, he would have, he would have been a rhino. 
He would uh -huh. he, he would have been a rhino. All right, we got just a couple of minutes left, but Carl uh, he basically was a Democrat until he uh, until the last twenty five years. I mean, he never he wasn't he was he was never a Republican. I don't know why Republicans, is... Republicans are nominating a guy who went to fundraisers for Democratic candidates for his almost his entire adult life, maxed in out the, for in the union lead. But and the differences between the parties at that time, although they seem great, were really about policy. You know, what should the marginal tax rate uh, uh, be? You know, how how aggressive should we be with national security? It wasn't, you know, should we have a dictator or not, uh, which is a kind of a, a starker uh, a choice that we yeah, yeah, you know there there's a lot of issues that are really very important that the public's never going to get you know are they really going to make the connection that Roe v Wade uh, the decision was thrown out because Trump appointed these judges if they do that's going to be bad news for him but I don't I'm not sure they will well the problem was that Biden didn't really prosecute that case last night. I mean he just oh, he, he, I, he, he was, was doing so it today. He was doing it today in Raleigh um uh pretty strongly but he's got to do that every day. Hey Dan, I know you got to duck out. Uh any final thoughts before you have to go? Well, I agree with Carla that we're going to see a lot of Gavin Newsom in in places like Wisconsin and Michigan and uh, and, and elsewhere, but he has his work cut out for him right here um, and in California. So, uh, you know, he's got a big agenda that he uh, needs to, fo that he wants to focus on, or he said he has wanted to focus on for his final uh, couple of years in office. And if he's spending uh, the, the year in swing states, um, or the, you know, the next couple months in swing states, um, he's going to lose a lot of momentum. Yeah, that's All my right. final thought. Th thanks for thanks for taking the time to talk with us, uh, Dan. I appreciate it. Carla, you bet. anytime. Uh, take Carla. care. Take hey. care. Hey, uh, Carla and and Bill. Uh, before before we uh, get done, you know, I just I want to talk about this point that we're not talking about a national election. Obviously, we're talking about fifty state elections in the District of Columbia, yeah. and and it's going to come down to those same six states that it has in, in all the recent elections, Michigan, uh, Wisconsin, Pennsylvania, uh, Nevada, uh, Arizona, and Georgia. It looks like Trump has really got a substantial or at least significant edge in, in the latter three, in the Sun Belt, Georgia, uh, uh, Nevada, and Arizona. He's got a, you know, if he wins all three of those Midwest states, and one, I think, district in in the congressional district in Nebraska, he can get to two seventy. Uh, so, what do you uh, what do you expect uh, in terms of both the campaign and the coverage going forward uh, in 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 that context? I, I think that they're, I think they're going to focus on you know it's going to they're going to everybody in all the networks, major uh, uh, newspapers, everybody's going to have a whole army of people in those in those states uh the the ones from the last time probably i i think obviously they are in north carolina because they think there's an opportunity there uh and they got uh, a, a governor's race that favors the the democrats and the well yeah the republicans got a whack job uh, they got a really bad candidate who's crazy as hell uh, so you know that we might add North Carolina if we get if we can get some momentum going. We uh, North Carolina could be in play, but you know Arizona and Nevada are both going to be tough. Uh, and of course we know well we know all too well that Pennsylvania and Wisconsin uh, are are are, are going to be tough states for us. Yeah, and uh, Carla, I guess some of the uh, Republican. Spinners last night were saying that they also see Virginia and Minnesota uh, in play. And that, I mean, if that's true, that's kind of catastrophic. Uh, as yeah, as yeah. I mean, it, it, as Dan said, I mean, look, the Democrats also really have to focus heavily on the House and Senate. And that may be where, uh, you know, I think most of the polls are showing that these Senate candidates, Democratic Senate candidates are ahead in, uh, in a lot of these states where Trump is ahead. Uh, even in California, there's a number of House races here that could swing the balance. And I think, you know, when you're talking about issues, you talk about issues, Jerry, um, 
Look, I think, uh, you know, uh, Biden has just got to pound the issue of like Obamacare and the loss of, uh, I haven't heard him mention, this was a, an issue. Well, he kept that, talking about the ACA. Nobody knows what the hell the yeah, ACA is. Yeah, I mean, this this was the issue that elected Barack Obama. If people lose that health care. Uh, and I haven't heard him mention that. I haven't heard him go back there. So I think he the the team needs to refocus on some of the issues. The inf on inflation. Look, a lot of this issue is about how American consumers are just not um, educated on the issues. Still, they're not reading newspapers anymore, Jerry, as we know. Uh, you, the the decline of local news has just uh, has just affected all of this. And I think uh, the fact is that the Biden team has a lot of work to do in, this, in these swing states to remind them that the economy is going gangbusters right now. The job, the hiring here, uh, you know, unemployment rate is to historic lows and has benefited uh, Black Americans and, uh, and um, uh, Latinos. These are voters who are supposedly going over to the Trump side, or as we know it are. So yeah, but the Biden team has a lot to do in those states. It's going to be uh, a couple of very, very tough months. Um, well, you know, the uh, the the media landscape is so different from when we were. Uh, Thank you. Exactly. Younger, you know, I mean, it, just in terms of social media and these ideological uh, media silos where people get their information, it's kind of hard to break through. Uh, I think in terms of that, and there's an asymmetry to it too. You know, I was struck last night on CNN. So as soon as the debate ended, they went to John King, who said, my phone's blowing up with, you know, Democrats. Okay, well, he's uh, allegedly a reporter. But then they go to Van Jones, who is there representing right. the <laughs> Democratic <laughs> point of view. And, and Jones is like writing a, a funeral eulogy for the guy. Yeah, I thought that was You would never see a Republican guy do that. <laughs> yeah, yeah that, that was disgraceful. I don't know what the hell is wrong with him. No, so it was, it was, the whole performance was uh, just bizarre, and it just went from there. I mean that, that... and and it, well, what we're talking about the media having problems. CNN's among the one of the big problem children in the media, and they really demonstrated last night they're not up to it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think the fact checking issue, uh, Bill has a really good point there. And, th and that is the problem, J Jerry, when you talk about the silos that people are in when they uh, consume media today, there is no fact checking on most of uh, on much many of the uh, sources now uh, where Trump is making these claims and, and he's getting away with lying repeatedly. And part of that is on media. Well, and if there is fact checking, then that just becomes part of the conspiracy. I mean, I, 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 I yeah, met exactly. the the CNN fact checkers right. in my piece right. this morning, and I got all exactly. once. You know, CNN may try to be more moderate and all the rest of it. for for the uh, MAGA crowd. They're a bunch of uh, you know lefties that they don't they don't believe a word they say. Right. Yeah, and, and can I just say? The media is all, focuses an inordinate amount of time on bullshit like is where's Melania, etc., instead of like really and and following his motorcade around and and uh, letting his crazy surrogates, uh, <laughs> you know, Marjorie Taylor Greene, etc., give endless press conferences and give endless time to those people. I mean, they get an incredible amount of airtime for for and, and, in fact, and in fact, you know, when the trial was going on. Yes. I mean, the, the networks sh almost shut down all the rest of their operations to cover the trial. Right, which was not the strongest case, particularly against Trump. And obviously, one of the reasons he's running is to make those two federal cases go away. Right. Um, yeah. yeah he, he, and of course, you know, today, uh, the Supreme Court, of course, in their way, came up with this decision that kind of sounds like it's good for Trump. Then you dig into it and it really isn't. He's still stuck with two counts uh, on the uh, J January 6th stuff. Uh, I, 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 but, you know, if he gets elected president, he's going to, uh, is he going to, can we indict him or not indict him? What's going to happen? Yeah. All well, right. Well, listen. In July, so we'll see how that affects the whole scene too. Yeah. <laughs> well, we got uh, until September twentieth. I think the first states 
uh, begin casting ballots. Ballots go out in California October 7th. So that's another dynamic that's going on is there is a lot of early voting. It's not election day, November 5th. So yeah, and, and and there is, we talked about all the problems with trying to communicate with people, but uh, the organizational side of politics is there's a lot of people paying a lot of attention to it all over the country, um, presidential campaigns and others. And uh, there'll, there'll be a lot of voters who are going to hear from campaigns. All right. Okay. Well, listen, you've both been very generous with your time. Carla, any final thoughts? Uh, I, I mean, stay tuned because so much can happen in the next uh, couple of months. And I think, uh, but it is on the media and it is on the voters um, to, to, to really educate themselves on what's going on. And it's going to be, uh, we'll see if dark Brandon emerges again. <laughs> and that may be the yeah. key here. <laughs> uh, Bill, uh, closing thought. Closing thoughts. No, I, I think we're going to, we're, we're in, this is a, horribly difficult campaign to get your hands on and I, I i don't think we're this this is not the end of the road here we're gonna have this we're gonna have lots of uh a change in this thing all right over time all right carla marino bill carrick and and dan moraine thank you so much uh for uh, speaking uh, with newsmakers this morning and uh thank you all for watching and we'll uh, we'll see you next time Okay, take care. Yeah, thanks.